بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم سبحانك لا نحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك أنت المقدم وأنت المؤخر وأنت على كل شيء قدير in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most compassionate, the most merciful, all praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He who is guided by the will of Allah, no one can misguide him. And he who is misguided, no one can guide him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I do bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. A'udhu billahi sami'i al-alim min ash-shaytan al-rajim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر. Today إن شاء الله we will continue we will be dealing with the following the first few minutes quick review just to keep you on the track with the previous session quick reminder five to seven minutes. Then we will talk about the virtues of Surah Al-Baqarah. Fada'ilu Surah Al-Baqarah. What makes chapter Al-Baqarah is something distinguished? <laughs> Why, to the best of our knowledge, Allah made this Quran to start with Surah Al-Baqarah? What does Surah Al-Baqarah contain inside? The virtues. We will bring a number of sound prophetic hadith, hadith sahiha. What does Prophet Muhammad say in a sound hadith about Surah Al-Baqarah and why? Then we will start inshallah with the help of Allah with the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah and the meaning of Al-Huruf Al-Muqatta'a, Alif Lam Mim, what does it mean? Why do we start with it? Is there a meaning for that? Then if we have a time, we will start talking about the descriptions, the, the attributes of Al-Mu'mineen as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started with that. Last time, very quickly, if you remember, it was about a general introduction about Surah Al-Baqarah, that uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, the name of the cow or Al-Baqarah is Tawqifi. Who can tell me what does Tawqifi mean, especially from non-Arabs? Non-Arabs. Question for non-Arabs. What does Tawqifi mean from last time's explanation? Yes, brother. Incident of, of, of the story, like, No. Like, so. When we say the name of the chapter is Tawqifi, it's good just to let the sound be familiar. Tawqifi, it's a special terminology. You need to know it. Tawqifi. We explained last time. No problem. It's not easy to memorize it. Tawqifi, it's a terminology, means the decision of what the name is has been taken by Allah. It's not something that the Sahaba or Prophet Muhammad made like, like a council and what do you think the best name should be used for chapter? What do you think? Then they made voting system. No, 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 no. Tawqifi means Allah is the one who decided that the name of this chapter is Al-Baqarah. Okay? Now, we said that chapter Al-Baqarah is the uh, longest chapter and the biggest chapter in terms. 286 verses, about three juz of the Quran, 62 pages of this Quran, which is a huge number of verses. And the highest percentage of Islamic legislations they do exist in surahs. <laughs> Al-Baqarah, it's good to know. And Surah Al-Baqarah, we said it's Madan from the Quran, the Madani Quran. Who can remind me what's the difference between Madani and Makki? Yes? Hijra. Taz, mashallah, jazakallah khair, barakallah fiqh. Madani is the Quran that was revealed after the Hijra, okay? Uh, Makki, the Quran that was revealed before the Hijra. So the biggest number of verses in one chapter from the Madani Quran and the whole Quran is Surah 
Al-Baqarah. And therefore, it contains the highest number of legislations, tashri'ats, about amazing topics. Part of what we said last time, and I finished this review very quickly, I will say them in Arabic, then in English. It contains Al-Qasas, Al-Dayn, Al-Wasiyya, Al-Qital, Al-Iddat Al-Mutawaffa Zawjuha, Al-Sadaqa, Al-Infaq, Al-Siyam, Al-Hajj, Al-Khamr, Al-Qimar, Al-Maysar, Al-Zawaj Min Ghayr Al-Bu'minat, Al-Hayd, Al-Half Bil-Yameen, Al-Talaq, Al-Rada'a. This is just part. You know, when someone, you know, the punishment for the killer, deaths, will, fighting, the time that uh, when a woman, when the husband of a woman, you know, is deceased or has passed away, the time that should, should be waiting, which is called al-idda, fasting, pilgrimage, alcohol, drinking alcohol, gambling, you know, marriage from non-Muslims, the period of the woman, you know, taking an oath, divorce, breastfeeding. Oh, imagine, this is just, a, it's legislations about how to manage your life. So it's a constitution. So this is one of the things that it's good to know about chapter al We did that last time. Today, inshallah, we will start talking about virtues of Surah Al-Baqarah. By the way, after hearing the following two or three hadith sahih about Surah Al-Baqarah, I expect, including myself, will never again fall in short in dealing Surah Al-Baqarah. The first sound hadith, it was narrated by Imam Muslim. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu says, قَالْ لَا تَجْعَلُوا بُيُوتَكُمْ مَقَابِرْ إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ يَفِرُّ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ الَّذِي تُقْرَأُ فِيهِ سُورَةُ الْبَقَرَةِ Literally, it's a sound hadith narrated by Imam Muslim. قَالْ لَا تَجْعَلُوا بُيُوتَكُمْ مَقَابِرْ Don't make your houses graves. Prophet Muhammad did not say, don't let your houses be like graves. No, no, no. It literally says, don't make your houses graves. Which is a much more powerful expression in the rhetorical language. يعني بلاغياً قوة عبارة لا تجعل بيوتكم مقابر تختلف عن قولنا لا تجعلوا بيوتكم كالمقابر <laughs> as if it's a reality if you do not do what will come next as if you are making or you are letting your house be a grave it's a metaphor a grave contains what dead body <laughs> it's nothing death death is a sign of you know class everything is finished so it's it's it's, it's a powerful Metaphorical image which be careful. Then he continued Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Satan is escaping. He can't stay in the house that Surah Al Baqarah is what? Recited. The house that continuously Surah Al-Baqarah is recited the Shaytan Yafir. You know the word Yafir, like when you escape from something are you afraid from, you can't stay there. You have to firar. In Arabic, when you flee, when you escape, you want to escape because you can't stand, you know, with that danger. It's very dangerous. About Taban if God forbid, alhamdulillah, you are all believers. If an atheist is listening to not, not to us to say, look, they believe in devil. Yes, yeah, we believe in devil, yes. Yes, because Allah told us that devil does not exist. If you, a Mr., Mrs., Ms., Miss, atheist, does, you don't believe in, uh, in devils, it's your problem, not my problem. We believe in the shaitan, because Allah told us, in the shaitan, we believe in the existence of Allah, and we believe. The one who does not believe, he needs another way of, you know, address. But now for us, we believe. Yes, definitely we believe in the existence of the shaitan. Actually, the whole idea of evil and goodness and the conflicts between them is revolved around the shaitan and hizb, hizb al-shaitan and hizb al-rahman. The whole idea. 
of Adam and the prostration for Adam by Iblis and the refusal of Iblis to the, the, the whole idea of our existence basically and the whole complex revolves around our faith. But my point, the first hadith, Al-Baytu Alladhi Tuqra Ufi Sutul Baqarah La Yaqrabuhu Shaytan Yafir, you know, he will escape. This is an indication. Now, when I was reading, you know, some al-ulama, they said, Al-Baytu Alladhi Tuqra, maybe you can't read for whatever reason, listen. <laughs> no problem. Just let the Quran, you know, you can, you alhamdulillah, now the devices that we have, radios, TVs, tablets, you know, the, the, the iPhones, the Android, you know, tens of different audio devices, many, of you can listen. So you can read, you can listen. And some of the scholars, they talked in this context about the importance of, of doing the ruqya with Surah Al-Baqarah. We will come now. Why? You know the ruqya? Is this word familiar, especially for non-Arabs? Ruqya? Who the, from non-Arabs? Because I know the Arabs, it's very familiar for them. So it's, it's a good opportunity for non-Arabs just to try to fix some Arabic words in their mind. The word ruqya, what does it mean? And I can't hear you with this. For Okay, the action of Ruqya is what exactly? What they do? They recite the Quran. They recite the Quran. This is now. Now, when you say Ruqya, it's the act of reciting a specific, you know, Quranic verses with the intention of protection by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for any kind of evil, which is basic part in our religion. We believe in that. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu encouraged us to do it and he himself used to do it okay now let me just small flag just to pay your attention or to bring your attention to something when we talk about ruqya okay which is to recite the quran by the way you can do ruqya it's the act of reciting the quran on yourself or someone else with the intention of protection by allah okay now Highly recommended some certain verses. However, if you recited anything from Quran, it's okay. But one of the most two important places in the whole Quran, which is used for Ruqya, is Ayatul Kursi, which exists in plus the last two verses in Surah Al Baqarah. Start with. So, plus when you talk about magic and the sihr, okay, and ruqya against any kind of harm, uh, it's in surat as well, al-Baqarah. So it, it has a unique status, surat al-Baqarah. Let's go with the, uh, okay, let me pay the attention to something, it's like a subtitle, but however, because, because we, we, we are passing by it. When we say Ruqya, please keep in your mind. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi taught us to do the Ruqya. For example, Qul A'udhu Rabbil Falaq, Qul A'udhu Rabbil Nas. He himself used to recite on him, himself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, Aman al-Rasul bima unzil ilayhi min rabbihi wal mu'minuna kullun amana ila akhirihi. And Ayatul Kursi, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayu qayyum. But, please, please fix in your mind. When you do the ruqya, it is not the act of recitation itself that will solve the problem. Who solves the problem? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> Be careful, okay? While doing this, we're doing as an act of worship. Providing that we believe that the real cause of influence, of making impact is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not the recitation itself. It's not the Quran itself. Now, now, now if you recited this Quran 1,000 times on a sick person if allah does not will nothing will happen it's not the recitation itself even if i'm sincere but i have to be sincere and i do it as part of islamic teachings 
following the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad, submitting myself, believing that Allah is the true, real healer of this person, and this is just a means of communication, okay? Because if we do not know this, nothing will happen. <laughs> uh, why I'm saying that? At least from my experience in the Arab world, for example, someone is sick. This sick person m might be someone, he or she, who does not pray. Or he's facing a financial problem. He's in a big uh, collapse of his company or whatever. You know, he's a, he needs someone to do the ruqya. Maybe the one who will do the ruqya as well is not <laughs> thinking in anything. Maybe he will take a money. <laughs> The one who is facing the problem does not care with Allah because he's not praying, Aslan. <laughs> and the one who's doing the ruqya basically is looking for the money. So what kind of effect will happen, do you think? What kind? Nothing. What's this? What's this? Forget others. Let's talk about ourselves. When you do the ruqya, the sincerity is the most important thing that could make something happen <laughs> it's by the will of allah but what makes the will of allah does something for your sake is your sincerity in dealing with him <laughs> it's not the recitation itself so many people they make mistake sorry they make a lot of mistakes they are facing a problem they go to people hey do you know someone who does a ruqya do you know a sheikh ya ammi before you go to any sheikh please what about you yourself yourself it's you who's facing the problem. The concept of ruqya, it's one of the divine wisdom ways to connect you with Allah. <laughs> the end result is your connection with Allah. It's not the ruqya, it's not the sound, it's not the phenomena of your sound, it's not the recitation, it's not the Quran, it's Allah. So when you are in a problem, go to Allah. When you are in a difficulty, go to Allah. Or let someone who is sincerely close and loves you doing the ruqya. It's not, a, it's not an empty act. Anyone can does it and khalas, uh, the, 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 sol the problem will be solved. No. So let's just try to fix this possible misconception. Time. The other hadith, it was narrated by Imam Muslim as well. It's an amazing hadith. قال اقرأ الصحيح حديث الساوند حديث قال اقرأوا سورة البقرة فإن أخذها بركة وتركها حسرة ولا تستطيعها البطلة البطلة for Arabs now if it's your first time if you know it please don't talk okay non Arabs just keep listening now I will do just a simple test if this hadith is heard by you for the same time, the first time, for Arabs, what does it mean when Prophet Muhammad says, "Wala tastati'uhal Who is the batala? Arabs. Huh? You first time? And I'm saying. <laughs> I'm back first time. Oh, so oh, so first time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Look, Prophet Muhammad says, اقرأوا سورة البقرة. Read chapter Al-Baqara. فَإِنَّ أَخْذَهَا بَرَكَ The word أَخْذَهَا, it's an Arabic expression. Literally, Al-Akhth means to take something. In this context, أَخْذُ الْبَقَرَة أخذ سورة البرق بقرة means قال تد قال كل أنواع التعامل any way of dealing سورة البقرة respecting سورة البقرة reading the تفسير of سورة البقرة listening to the recitation of سورة البقرة reciting سورة البقرة any type of connection with سورة البقرة is بركة being close in reciting listening Teaching, reading the tafsir, doing whatever related to Surah Al-Baqarah contains baraka. Baraka means blessings. This is the first part. فَإِنَّ أَخْذَهَا baraka. قَالْ وَتَرْكَهَا حَسْرَةً The one who leaves dealing with Surah Al-Baqarah 
will be in a status of being, he will regret. Yendam, yatahassar, heartbreaking. You know, they would just say like a sigh, like, oh, I lost it. Rahat Okay? So be careful. Don't let this golden opportunity just pass without you taking the benefit of it. Let's come to the, yes. Akhdaha baraka, for example. Now, the concept, he's asking about the concept of baraka. What does it mean that reciting al Baqarah is baraka? If you recite al Baqarah with the intention of following the commandments of Allah and His Prophet, Allah will give you baraka. Type baraka, which is blessings, it's a huge general concept in Islam. It's a religious, faith based concept. Yani, if you don't believe, you can't understand what I'm talking about. If you don't believe, you can't taste or realize what I'm talking about. It's impossible. Impossible. If you believe, I will give you an idea about the concept of baraka. Now, how many of you, alhamdulillah, they don't miss al-fajr prayer on time? Please raise up your hands. Fajr prayer. You don't miss. Rarely you must. Alhamdulillah. Right. It's a good percentage. Right. Can you see your day when you pray Al-Fajr on time and go outside to do your do daily works? And what happens when you take more rest in hours to gain more strength for your body and you don't pray Al-Fajr? What, what happens? Have you compared? Now, in theory, if you sleep more, you will gain more power. Okay? In theory. When you sleep more without praying the Fajr, compared with when you sleep less for whatever reason, but you pray the Fajr and you start your day, the achievements on that day continuously, always, where is better? Th those who pray the Fajr, they know what I'm talking. It's, uh, you know, with calculations, yeah, I'm supposed when I sleep more to have more power I can. No, no, no. When you, sleep, when you pray the Fajr, you will have an amazing power, amazing happiness, amazing kind of spiritual power. What, does, what is this? This is Barakah. Who brings this to you? Huh? It's not you. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a Barakah of. Type. Compare yourself if you are doing a lot of sports, bodybuilding, eating the best food, doing the best style of life, but God forbid if you are very rude with your parents and you are doing uquq all the time, I say, you know, you, you scream in the face of your mother or, uh, or father or whatever. Compare your life in terms of achievements with when you have a very nice relations with your parents. What happens in your life? Most of us, we came across this somehow. No baraka. No baraka, because Allah is the one who will give you. It's, the baraka, it's a package. Contains the tranquility. Tuma'nina. Contains the peace of mind. Contains the achievement. <laughs> Contains the things that I, I, I did not know how did it happen. Because Allah made it happen. For my sake, because I was doing something good. For his sake. So this package of happiness, tranquility. Achievements, you know, this kind of sakina, tumanina, peace of mind, all of these meanings with the achievements, with happiness, you see the results, all of them is part of the concept of baraka. And we can still go on and on. Some, some people, for example, for example, final example, one, two persons graduated from the same university. Employed same company, same salary. One of them is paying sadaqah all the time. And he's using his money in halal. Part of it, he's taking care of his parents, making them happy. Okay? Not spending money in any haram source. Other person, deliberately, he's using part of his money in gambling, alcohol, going with, you know, doing bad things with women here and there, 
part of his money. No sadaqah, no zakah, no spending on parents, nothing. You will see how the barakah here is amazing and the destruction of al-barakah here is amazing as well. <laughs> will you say, Ya Allah, you, will, you, you can you see it, barakah here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa ma tunfiqu. Allahumma uh, salli ala Muhammad. Take it here. لا تبعت ال المضاعفة مضاعفة الأموال. I forget the ayah. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد. Anyway, the meaning of many ayat about the آه الله يزكي الخير نعم آه الله يزكي الخير. مثل الذين ينفقون أموالهم في سبيل الله كمثل حبة أنبتت. سبع سنابل في كل سنبلة مئة حبة والله يضاعف. What is يضاعف? Multiplies. Okay, what is this? بركة. This is not applicable at all on the one who does not care with Allah and does not pay the صدقة. This is بركة. This is against the بركة. So it's a general concept of توفيق. Multiplies in happiness, tranquility, money, physical, in many things, providing that I'm doing this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's a huge meaning. I hope I covered part of it. So when Prophet Muhammad say, فَإِنَّ أَخْذَهَا بَرَكَةً So part of things that brings to you al baraka is reciting or dealing or listening or with Surah Al-Baqarah. قَالْ وَتَرْكَهَا حَسْرَةً the opposite exactly when you leave it, when you forsake it, you don't care with reading or reciting or listening, you are a loser. You will lose. Now the last part. قال ولا تستطيعوا البطلتو. البطلتو, this means the magicians, السحرة. Which uh, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is paying our attention to the importance of Reciting Surah Al-Baqarah to protect yourself from the magic. <laughs> but now, now, especially uh, as I say, part of Ar Ruqya, to put now, now in Surah Al-Baqarah, we will come to the specific verse because the first time magic is mentioned in the Quran, it's in Surah Al-Baqarah. Ah, Yu'allimun al nasa السحر وما أنزل على الملكين بباب لهاروت وما روت وما يعلمان من أحد حتى يقولا. We will explain this. إن شاء الله when the time comes for this. So the idea of magic, which could hurt human beings, the best protection against this thing. Later we will explain. Magic is to recite the Quran in a specific سورة البقرة. In specific, ayat al-kursi and Allahu la ilaha wa aman al-rasulu bima unzil alayhi. Now, a prophet is guiding you if you want to be protected from those people because they can't. Those who are based on batil, you know, the false, the wrongdoers, they can't hurt you if you are protecting yourself with the shield of Surah Al-Baqarah. This is the meaning. Now, اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد. Then another ayah where Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم sorry another حديث صحيح Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم says if I'm not mistaken I forget to to quote it here but I think it was narrated by Imam Bukhari قال الآيتان من سورة البقرة من قرأ بهما في ليلة كفتاه. It's amazing. قال الآيتان من سورة البقرة من قرأهما في ليلة كفته. I will say it literally, then I will explain the possible meanings for the word. Because by the way, for the non-Arabs, Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم was described بأنه أُتي جوامع جوامع الكلم. والله it's very difficult to explain in English. جوامع الكلم. كيف نترجمها أستاذ يسري هاي جوامع الكلام؟ زاك الله خير ما شاء الله very nice وين آه؟ Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم one of the characteristics that Allah 
has bestowed his blessings upon him, he gave him the power that always he is expressing himself with very little words, but this little words contains a lot of meanings. Because Arabic language is the richest language on earth. It's the language of Ahl al-Jannah. It's the language of the Quran. It's an amazing language. So, Prophet Muhammad was given the power of expressing clearly, little, precise, direct to the points, many meanings. This is called Jawami' al-Kalim. So, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu used this power of Jawami' al-Kalim in this context. He say, Man qara'a. He said the two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, which is آمَنَ الرَّسُولُ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ كُلٌّ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ لَا نُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَ أَحَدٍ مِنْ رُسُلِهِ وَقَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا غُفْرَانَكَ رَبَّنَا وَإِلَيْكَ الْمَصِيرِ لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا واخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا أصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين It's an amazing two verses amazing you know, it summarizes nearly all the relations between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about everything. These two verses of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, قَالْ min surah al-Baqarah, the last two verses of surah al-Baqarah, anyone who recites them in a night, which means before you go to sleep, قَالْ كَفَتَحْ كَفَتَحْ literally, which means they will be enough for him. Enough instead of what? <laughs> so when I read... You know, many explanations of the scholars. It's enough for him. Khalas. Don't worry, it's enough. Okay, enough. Instead of what exactly? Now, part of the word kafatahu. Kafatahu mimma. In Arabic, we can say kafatah. It literally says, it's enough for him. Now, part of the meaning of kafatah. Qal kafatahu min qiyam layl Now, reciting the two verses in less than two minutes and a half, will be enough for you than doing the Qiyam al-Layl the whole night. It will give you this imager. It's enough. If you did it, don't worry if you did not do the Qiyam. For example, one. قال كفتاه عن قراءة القرآن It will be enough for you as an ajr before you go to sleep as if you have read the whole Quran. It means كفتاه من كل سوء it will, will work the job of a protection against any kind of harm. قال كفتاه بسبب الأجر عن طلب أي شيء آخر. It will be enough for him with the amount of ajr that in case if he did not do anything else, it's enough. <laughs> it's like someone who says, what would you like, what amount of money would you like to have? He said, one million dollars. Say, okay, if you just take this thing, from this place to that place, it's enough for you. Enough for what? You will take the one million. Khalas, that's it. Yes. Okay, thank you. One million, khalas. I don't need to work anymore. <laughs> ah, alhamdulillah. Now, some scholars, they say all of this all together. Kafatahu. Which means when you recite these two verses as if you have read the Quran and you had like a guarantee of protection from any kind of harm. And as if you have done the Qiyam the whole night and the amount of Ajr that you have achieved if you recited them with the intention of seeking the Ajr, believing that it is the commandment of Allah, you will get an Ajr. If you have done nothing else, no problem because you have achieved everything you would love to achieve just by reciting these two. Now, our point is not the two verses. Our point that these two verses is part of Surat. Al-Baqarah, because of them, now Surah Al-Baqarah, because of these two verses, and Ayat Al-Kursi, Allahu la ilaha illa hayu qayyum, one of the great main reasons why chapter Al-Baqarah has this big status, because it contains one of the greatest ayats in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Prophet Muhammad tells us.
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What I'm doing now, I'm just conveying part of what we call them Fada'il Surat Al-Baqarah. The virtues of the chapter of Al-Baqarah. In case if you don't memorize Al-Baqarah, in case if you can't read Surat Al-Baqarah in full, which is most of us, we don't, we, we don't do it, at least let's start from tonight. Don't sleep without reciting the last two verses of Surat Al-Baqarah with Ayat Al-Kursi. The greatest. Ayat Al-Kursi, the last two verses. Now, we have Ayat Al-Kursi and this. When we come to Ayat Al-Kursi, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum. La ta'khuduhu sinatu wa la nawm. Lahu ma fi al-samawati wa ma fi al-ard. Man dhal ladhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi-ithnihi ya'lamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum. ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤوده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم. إن حديث صحيح، Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم says من قرأ آية الكرسي في ليلة جعل الله عليه ملكا يحرسه حتى يصبح. and والله إنها مجربة. The one who recites Ayat al-Kursi in specific. So let's focus from Surah al-Baqarah on three verses. Ayat al-Kursi and the last two verses. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al Amen al-Rasul bima unzila ilayhi. The last two and Ayat al-Kursi. These three verses in specific Ayat al-Kursi, if you read them before you go to sleep, you will have a special protection by an angel, he will be dedicated like a, literally a bodyguard protecting you from the shaitan, literally. Some people say, oh, look, I think none of us but has already encountered the whispering of the shaitan while he's sleeping in his dreams. You know, this kind of, you know, mess that happens you know, in your mind when you sleep all the time. The amazing words that happens inside. When you recite Surat Al-Baqarah with this faith-based intention, you will see the result. But do it with this intention. Completely. No waswasa, no whispering here in your mind. Because this is the most powerful, and by the way, the only way that a shaitan was given the access to influence us. What is the power of the shaitan against us? It's what? What's what? That's it. <laughs> shaitan does not have a physical power against us. Shaitan cannot come and bring this and take it like this in my face. No, 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 no. He's just doing what? Whispering. One of the favorite ways for the shaitan, now you are not in your conscious, you sleep. So you need an extra protection, antivirus. So we have, alhamdulillah, a divine antivirus. <laughs> it's made by Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The condition for this antivirus or anti-Satan to be activated in your device is to recite it with the intention, with the motivation that you believe it's by Allah, plus the whole package of yourself freely, you are closer from Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> You get my point? So I have already prayed the Isha. I've done the best of what I can do in khair, goodness. I go to sleep after doing my duties. And I want protection now from the virus of the shaitan. Recite Surah Al-Baqarah. Wallahi, wallahi many, many times when you forget this, you will witness the difference between this and that. And now this is just part of Surah Al-Baqarah. In addition to that, now, now, this is, let's say, very quickly about the virtues of Surah Al-Baqarah. Type. Now, if you don't have any direct question, what I've said, I will start dealing with Alif, Lam, Mim. What does it mean? About the virtues of Surah Al-Baqarah. Do you have any question? Any comments? Any addition? Yes, brother. Yeah. When you say Barakah, then we uh, include, as you said in the beginning as well, Sakina, Afia, all yeah. those are part of the bigger picture. Brother, Sakina, tranquility, okay, or peace of mind, for example, okay? Afia. Afia, 
كيف نترجم العافيه؟ ويل بينغ فور اكزامبل جزاك الله خير ما شاء الله اوكي بركه از جنرال مينينغ وي سي توفيق فور اكزامبل وات از توفيق؟ It's it's a, by the way you can't translate it. <laughs> the word tarfiq literally could be translated to be guided by Allah. Okay? To reach success by the blessings of Allah. In Arabic, the indication of the word baraka or tawfiq, it's huge. It contains anything that could come to your mind from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all the meanings, yes, they are included in it. So it's, it's a now what decides how great part of this huge meaning is basically is your sincerity. Get my point? So it could it could cover this and this and this and this and this and this and this. Who decides? Allah, depending on what? My sincerity. <laughs> so to what level I'm sincere? It's the kawn, the universe of Allah. And Allah is the one who made the laws. And Allah, the one who stop <laughs> the law and change the law and does everything. It's his universe. That's why we are part of our faith. What? You know, the predetermination of Allah and my dua, they are, you know, Having like some kind like yatasara, uh, literally wrestling, okay, or conflicting. It's it's a metaphor to tell you that sometimes your dua will protect you from many things. They were about to hurt you, but they stopped because of your dua. Okay, who did that? It's the law of Allah subhanahu wa taala. It's please do your best. Leave the rest to Allah subhanahu wa taala, and it's Allah who's controlling everything. And when I was talking about the ruqya, I forget to mention, for example, Ibrahim alayhi salam, the best example. وَإِذَا مَرِضْتُ فَهُوَ يَشْمِينَ وَالَّذِي هُوَ يُمِيتُنِي ثُمَّ ثُمَّ يُحِيِّنُ وَيُحِيِّنُ وَالَّذِي يُمِيتُنِي ثُمَّ يُحِيِّنُ نعم هذا وَالَّذِي يُمِيتُنِي ثُمَّ يُحِيِّنُ وَإِذَا مَرِضْتُ فَهُوَ Yashfeen, Abraham alayhi salam, Khalilullah, part of his dua, you know, his, his, his saying, it's Allah who brings the healing and cure to me if I became sick. And it's him who brings me life and who made me die, which means at the end everything is under control of Allah. That's why, simply, in a very simple way, we say we submit ourselves to Allah, so that Allah will let everything in his kingdom, in his universe, be working for our sake. Simple formula. Wallahu alam. I have a question. Yes. Uh, this surah is named after cow, right? Mm. Uh, mm. Uh, so in the context of modern society in Canada, how do you relate in the Bakrah? We did not come to this, yes. Okay. But now, yes, the title. It's named Al Baqarah, referring to a very specific incident happened with a group from the people of Israel at the time of Musa alayhi salam in the diaspora when they were when they left Egypt before they settled down in south of what we know as Palestine now. You know, many, many events happened with them, tens of events. One of them is the story of Al-Baqarah. The story of Al-Baqarah or the cow contains a lot of lessons. Still, we will come to it, inshallah. So because of that, it's Allah's decision to let this be the main title. It's it's amazing lesson. But when we reach to the verses, uh, وَذْ قَتَلْتُمْ نَفْسًا فَدَّارَأْتُمْ فِيهَا وَاللَّهُ مُخْرِجٌ مَّا كُنْتُمْ تَكْتُمُونَ uh, etc. You, have a, uh, you know, it, it's a long story. Inshallah, we will cover it in its time. Okay? Inshallah. Jazakallah khair. طيب. Yes, brother. Sorry, one last question. أَخْذُهَا بَرَكَةً بَرَكَةً in the actual action. يعني مثلاً, if you're reciting it, there will be barakah in reciting it, will there be in other aspects of your life? In other aspects of your life. Well, I mean, both could be meant. No, no, no. 
أَخْذُهَا بَرَكَة Now, the fact that you were guided to be connected to Surah Al-Baqarah in itself is Baraka. Okay? However, reciting it will bring Baraka <laughs> to your life. So, both meanings are, uh, could be there. I mean, no contradiction. But, you know, be close from it. You will see what kind of amazing results will happen, inshallah. Bidhan Mawla Azza wa Jal. Yes, brother. Okay. Can, please, can, can you speak loudly? I can't hear you. Yeah. Yes, uh, yes. Uh. What is the reward? Prophet Muhammad said, The reward is, you will be as if you've done the full Qiyam the whole night. You will be as if you have read the full Quran. You will be protected from any kind of harm, of whispering, of shaitan, of anything else. And you will have an ajr. There is no specific number to be mentioned because we don't know what is the hasana or something. To a degree that you need nothing else to be done in terms of the amazing ajr that you have achieved, which is amazing. Clear? Yes. Type. Yes, brother. If you recite uh, Ayat al Kursi, uh, will you be protected from physical harm? Now, from one angle, yes. It, but, but. Now, it's not a clear cut 100%. Let's say uh, results. Why? Because sometimes the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plus what we call al akhid bil asbab. Let me just go just one step back. We are living in this life and we have many laws in this life which was created by Allah. Allah gave us the power of intellect and give us the knowledge and the ability and the willpower to deal with it, okay? Now, what comes under our ability, it's our duty to do it. If we are falling in short, we might be punished because of our shortcomings. So, for example, for example, if this is a knife, very sharp knife, if I did like this on my hand, what will happen? Sharp knife on my hand. What will happen? <laughs> you know, I might cut part of the veins. You know, maybe a, a big harm type. If I said, if I said, God forbid, for example, if I saw my kid holding a knife and he's about to hurt himself, and I said, no problem. I will recite Surah Al-Baqarah. Sorry. I will recite Ayat al kursi Allahu la. I'm witnessing him. He's holding the knife. He's about to hurt himself. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al hayyul qayyum. Do you think Allah will respond? No, 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 no. I'm a crazy person. I'm a stupid person. I'm supposed to go and take the knife from the kid and protect him from touching or holding the knife. When I go to sleep, closing the doors, and I said, Ya Allah, I've done what I can do in what comes under my control. What happens beyond that, it's not under my control. Now I recite and I ask help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that, that, to make it clear. So from one sense, yes, in case I've done my best. If I've done, not done my best, no, I'm in another category. I'm in, another, in a category of being punished for making fun of the law. Got my point? Clear? Tamam, okay. So I just wanted to uh, yeah. confirm what I believe. If you are driving, you start driving, and you are reciting with the same belief, yeah. so you will be pro protected with 75,000 mm. parishtas. Mm. That's what I thought. Number one. Number two, in Canada we have very normal the fire, you know. In the surrounding. Ah. So once you recite the Surah, uh, so the, the, the 40, 40 houses from right and 40 houses left got protected by your research. Is it true? I don't know this hadith. I, I don't know. Maybe it's hadith. I, I don't know. Now, at least it's not in my mind now. 
So uh, I can't comment on this hadith. But, you know, when we say protection, it's a general meaning. Protection in your heart, protection in waswasa, definitely. Physical protection depends on many circumstances. The will of Allah, okay, other laws, my shortcomings. So it's a little bit confused formula by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if I did this, even if it did not work to the best of my will, but it will work in terms of the ajr because I did it for the sake of Allah. It's like when I make dua. Do you remember when we talked about dua? When I make the dua and I deserve to be respond because I've done not anything against my dua. And Allah said, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ ادْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ طب, If I'm making the dua, Allah is not responding. What does it mean? Maybe Allah is not responding in the way that I want. <laughs> but Allah is responding in another <laughs> way. Because sometimes, I read the, for example, may, maybe, maybe, I read, a simple example. You talk about the fire in the in surrounding area. I read Ayat al-Kursi. A fire happened in the neighborhood and it touched my house. No, but wait, wait, wait. The will of Allah is much more bigger, larger, more complicated than our simple intention. I've done my role in terms of seeking protection. So I had, I had credited the Ajr. Allah is trying to protect me from staying in this neighborhood because he knows in the ghaib next year it will be full of drug dealers and they might kill my kids. So Allah wants me to leave this place. <laughs> so in my simple understanding, I'm just reciting so ayat al-kursi so that not the fire will not touch me. Allah wants Aslan to let me leave the place. <laughs> For deliberately, Allah sent the fire to my house. <laughs> Here comes the submission. <laughs> I did my role and I had the ajr. When something happened against, it means Allah knows better. Definitely Allah, Allah knows better. And he has done the best for me. So that's why I say, Alhamdulillah. Because it's not a condition. خلاص. I said, Ya Allah, don't let this fire come. خلاص. Allah will not freeze the universe because of my word. Because Allah knows much better. That's why he is al-hakim. Out of his hikmah. And by the way, these meanings can be highlighted easily when you read Surat Al-Kahf. Especially the story of Musa with Al-Khadr. Now, it's, it's a message to prophets. Musa alayhi salam, but it, the, the idea was not clear. It tells you about the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How did you kill him? How did you make a hole in the... How did you... Wait, 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 wait. You don't know what Allah knows. وَأَمَّا السَّفِينَةُ فَكَانَتْ لِمَسَاكِينَ Oh, okay. It's not your business, sir. It's Allah's job. <laughs> you just submit. <laughs> the ship was for... Poor people. Allah wanted to protect in His way. وَأَمَّا الْغُلَامُ وَأَمَّا الْجِدْآرُ فَكَانَ لِغُلَامَيْنِ يَتِيمَيْنِ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ وَكَانَ تَحْتَهُ كَنْزٌ لَهُمَا وَكَانَ أَبُوهُمْ It's a lot of details. No one knows them except Allah. There is an amazing qadr. There is a divine plan. When, when Musa alayhi salam, how come you are trying to rebuild a wall for a wicked people? They refused to feed us. They refused to give us drink. They kicked us out in a very mean way. How come? الجدار, hey, listen. Allah's plans and wisdom is not like your simple. Oh, they did not give me food. Wait, 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 wait. This wall contains a treasure underneath it. It belongs to two young kids. Their father was a righteous person. So Allah decided to honor them because of their father. He kept the treasure and they will discover it. Allah knows how, after how many years, 10, 15, 20 years. This is all ilm ghaib. We don't know it. It's just like a just an idea about how Allah works or how Allah operates his universe. <laughs> so, from one angle, we read. If it goes against our will, submit. There is something better. You don't know it. 
Providing that it's not punishment. Because <laughs> sometimes, okay, I read, imagine, I read Surah Al-Baqarah for an old Surah Al-Baqarah after I finished a porno movie. Uh, by the way, do you think some people they do it? Wallahi, some people they do it. So, وَآخَرُونَ خَلَطُوا عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَآخَرًا So it's it, mixing bad and good, bad and good, bad and good. You know, just now he was screaming in the face of his mother. عُقُقْ والدين. Then he recited ayat al-kursi. يَا عَمِّي صَلِّ عَنَّ نَبِي يعني, Please, let everything goes in parallel. <laughs> okay? He's screaming, in, he's doing a kabira, major sin. Then he's doing a sunnah, reciting an ayah. No. Big problem. Okay? Now, okay. He has done a sadaqah, mashaAllah, ten dollars for a faqir. Alhamdulillah. Wait, wait, wait. Who's this person? This person is an Arab who works in one of security forces in one of Arab countries. And his job is to torture the political people who are captured to be tortured. So he had just finished his job, eight hours of torturing innocent people. Then he gave sadaqah. <laughs> then he read Ayat al-Kursi ten times. Then he read Surah al-Baqarah 5,000 times. Do you think will benefit him? Wallahi, just one da'wah from mazloom, one da'wah will delete all of these things. Just one mazloom who's tortured now, you know, they are lashing him or hitting him without any reason. Just to shut up his mouth, not to criticize the corruption in his country. Just this person, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, take revenge for me. They are torturing me for no reason, Ya Allah. Just the tear of his mother or his wife or his daughter. Wallah will delete all kind of ajr, even if he achieved the ajr, we, we will go. So it's a, so it's, it's a, it's not a simple one element uh, equation. <laughs> it's complicated. So we need to take it as a package. Be careful. Uh, you got my point? Ya Allah. Type. And I think because we have just six minutes left, I was about to start with Alif, Lam, Mim. Let's leave Alif, Lam, Mim to next time. Jazakallah khair. By the way, today I'm very happy because we have about 10, 10 questions which was, I was not familiar with that. Most of the time, no one asks questions. So it's good. I, I'm very happy for that, Yani. Even if I explain just 20 minutes, then I answered half an hour questions, I will be more happy because the interaction brings much more better meanings to the, uh, you know, to the self when listening and discussing. Jazakum Allah khair. Barakallah feekum. Thank you, Mari, very much. And uh, don't forget us, forget us in, in, our, in your dua, inshallah. Jazakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum.